The horizon for returns is in nanoseconds, okay? It's kind of glib. What about it, 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 no, tell me, time Let me just finish this real quick. Uh, investment horizons are really so short that deals that are struck at the venture capital level are ultra net positive to them before the deal signed. Okay, they're making 200, 300, 400 percent before they actually steal everything you own. And you go to the long-term investors, let's say Apollo Capital, good people. Their long-term horizon is five years. Now, for five years of their money, they aren't looking for a 20% return. They're looking for a thousand percent return for five years. The possibility of getting this thing to a certain regulatory pathway in five years is zero right now. So what John and I are working on is creating the regulatory pathway and a guarantee that if you can produce a safe commercial technology, that there is a path. Until the pathway is established, nobody with a full set of marbles in their head is going to invest in this thing. They, they can't. They can't invest in something where there's not a guaranteed timeline of, of Uber return. Okay. So, so there's no private money that's going to do this, and then the little chumpy change they give people, like, I'm going to give you $5 million for your idea. You're going to work, 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 and they're going to take all your IP, and they're going to put it in their pocket, and they're going to say, and they're going to say to you, you know what, you didn't meet your investment hurdles, you didn't meet this commitment on the timetable, I'm so sorry, but, you know, basically you've defaulted your entire equity position, and, and, and you know, we know you have a family, and you've got a mortgage, so... We're going to let you earn some of that back for the rest of your life. You see, that's how money works today. And everybody thinks that money is this, you know, the investors out there are like, just want to build things. They've been in the business of deconstructing our country for 30 years. They don't even know how to build things. I spent probably eight or nine hours in conference calls with the guy who left Wall Street with $9 billion, and he was in the metals refining business. And after all of these hours on the phone and all the documents we said, he kept trying to figure out how he could put in like $5 million for a $400 million project and get a return. And, and I'm like, you can't do it. I said, you're a businessman. You have experience in, in this specific business. You know you have to put capital in to get capital back out. He said, Jim, I never built a business in my entire life. All I did was assemble a bunch of businesses and pull money out. That is your billionaire heroes that you think want to build a bright future for your kids. No, they're parasites. Our monetary system is messed up. It's broke. We're trying to create a pathway so that so that when there, there's a regulatory pathway, you can go to the big, true long-term investors, not Wall Street, energy providers, energy consumers. If you went to Google and said, we've got a regulatory pathway and a seven-year path to commercialization, you guys can own 15% of it. Those guys are investing in the future. Then you go to Peabody Energy. Peabody Energy is looking at a very tough regulatory environment who says, wow, we can turn our nasty, dirty coal into liquid fuels and make 1,000% more on every ton. Those are your investors. Wall Street hasn't built anything worth building in a long time. I mean. Is you it know, possible to create this regulatory pathway within a state, or does it have to be on yes, a federal Yes, there is. Yes. Any two states can say, we want to opt out of the federal rules for the NRC. It has to be two. Yeah. There's some weak language, or there's some language specific to states that say that an individual state can do it, but federal regulations, any two states can opt out. But is a is somebody going to invest a billion dollars for seven to ten years and know that the federal government is always going to be putting pressure on the state because they want them in the program? You know, look at New York. There's an in, Indians want to build a reservation and uh, a gambling casino in New York, and New York wants the tax proceeds, and literally it goes down to a war when in fact the Indians technically are a sovereign nation. So you know this thing about sovereignty and money they cross lines. And very, very nasty things happen. We're just trying to create the regulatory pathway so what you want to happen can happen. And it's unrealistic to believe it's going to happen 
until they have a sure thing. You know, the, 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 the great you know, risk takers of our day are long gone. I mean, maybe the last one was Steve Jobs. You know, I mean, these people just, they don't have that in them. Smart money takes no risk. And do you really want to be in the camp of dumb money? <laughs> right? So this is, this is the paradox we're in. So John and I are, are trying to fulfill everybody's same goal. And, and we agree with everything everybody wants here. We're just trying to be the realists that say, let us go line this up on a regulatory st standpoint so that the money can flow in and this can happen. And then, of course, we are very, very U.S.-centric. We really do want the United States to control the technology. We've been approached dozens of times by plans to build them in South Africa or in Pakistan or Chile. You know. The problem is, if you do it there, America will get no benefit, but America's long arm will reach out and stop that program. Mm -hmm. Because do you think America wants to see South Africa charging a one kilowatt, one cent per kilowatt tax to the world? But why wasn't America smart enough to do that themselves? Because they're just hunkered down in, 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 in the, the, bureau, the, the weight of bureaucracy, right? And, and, and they've got opposing factions. Think about it, the Department of Energy has got a budget bigger than many governments' entire GDP. So anyway, that's the best I can tell you. I gotta eat. Me and we gotta have a quick chat. Like I, I, I am in your camp. You heard what I said. I am the biggest proponent of making this happen. But I just worked in Wall Street. I spent five years raising money, a billion dollars, and I know what goes on when you try to raise that kind of money. And we were fully permitted for what we wanted to do. There was no regulatory risk. Zero regulatory risk. That's the nature of the beast.